Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is electrical resistance, and we want to know what is resistance, what variables affect resistance, and in what manner do they affect it. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. The charge carriers within a wire of an electric circuit are mobile electrons. When I say mobile electrons, I'm referring to those electrons that have escaped the valence shell of the atoms of the wire. The path of these mobile electrons is anything but straight. Because of their collisions with the atoms and ions of the wire, they follow a more zigzag shape, as shown. The collisions of mobile electrons with the atoms and ions of a wire leads to resistance. Resistance is the general hindrance to the flow of charge within a wire or a device on a circuit. There are three factors that affect the amount of resistance experienced by a wire. One of them is the length of the wire. The second is the cross-sectional area or diameter of the wire. And the third is the types of atoms that that wire is composed of. We can think of electrical potential difference impressed across the two ends of the circuit as being that quantity that encourages the flow of charge. And we can think of resistance as that quantity that discourages the flow of charge. It's the interaction between these two opposing quantities that affect the current or charge flow rate. As charge passes through the electrochemical cell of an electric circuit, it gains energy. This results in an increase in electric potential or voltage, such that the electric potential, V, at location A is significantly greater than it is at location D. But as charge carriers pass through the wires of an electric circuit, there are small amounts of energy losses. These energy losses are due to the collisions of those charge carriers with the atoms and ions of the wire. This causes the electric potential at A to be just a little bit greater than the electric potential at B and the electric potential at C to be just a little bit greater than the electric potential at D. But the major voltage drop or loss in energy and electric potential occurs in the load in the light bulb or the heater or the motor. There, electrical energy is transformed into other forms of energy and a large voltage drop results. Thus, the electric potential at B is significantly greater than it is at location C. We can represent these changes in electric potential by an electric potential diagram. Here you see a diagram shown for the circuit above. You'll note on the diagram that the level of electric potential at A and B is very similar with B being slightly less and the electric potential level for location C and D is also very similar with D being slightly less. But the big drop in electric potential occurs from B to C because the load is located in that location. It's the bulb that transforms this electrical energy to light energy and thermal energy causing the large voltage drop. And from location D to A, that's where there's a gain in electric potential as the battery does work up on the charge. The three variables that affect the resistance in a wire are length, cross-sectional area, and the type of material the wire is composed of. Resistance is directly proportional to the length of a wire. A longer wire offers more resistance to the flow of charge than a shorter wire. Resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of a wire. The wider wires with greater cross-sectional area have less resistance than the narrower wires. When it comes to materials, different materials offer different amount of resistance to the flow of charge. It's materials like copper and silver that are the best of conductors and offer less resistance to the flow of charge than materials like nickel or iron. The mathematical equation that relates the resistance R of a wire to the variables that affect it is given here. The unit for resistance is the ohm, named after physicist George Ohm. The symbol we use to represent the unit ohm is the Greek letter omega, shown here. In the equation for resistance, the first variable on the right-hand side is the resistivity. That's the symbol rho, a Greek letter. The symbol L represents the length of the wire, and the symbol A represents the cross-sectional area of a wire. When using this equation to calculate resistance, it's important to give great attention to units. The unit on resistivity is ohm times meter, so it's important to substitute in values for length in units of meters and value for areas in units of meters squared, so that the meter units cancel out and the only unit remaining is the omega, or ohm. 
If the value is not given, then the cross-sectional area of the wire can be calculated assuming a circular cross-section. We use pi times r squared, where r is the radius, to calculate this cross-sectional area. The resistivity values rho can be found on a lookup table usually readily available on the internet. Here's a sampling of values for resistivity for various materials. You'll notice that silver and copper at the very top of the table have the lowest of resistivity values and thus offer the least resistance to the flow of charge. Resistors are small components that are included in circuits for the sole purpose of offering resistance to the flow of charge. Manufacturers of devices often use resistors in various locations within the circuit in order to control the amount of current at that location within the circuit. The photo above illustrates a collection of resistors that you might have found used in a physics lab. These resistors have a color band system that is comprised of four different colored bands. Let's learn how to use the color band system in order to determine the resistance value of these resistors. This diagram represents a resistor with its four color bands. Notice that three of the bands are very close together and the distance between the fourth band and the third band is a little bit larger. Lay the resistor in front of you in the manner that is shown. Now I'm going to label the colored bands with a letter, the first band being labeled A, the second band B, the third band is labeled M for multiplier, and the fourth band is labeled T for tolerance. Now I need a chart that helps me to convert color to numerical values. Here is the chart. Now I need a formula to help me to convert the colors into a resistance value. The formula goes like this. Resistance equal 10 times A plus B. Take that quantity and multiply by 10 to the nth. When you're done, you'll have a resistance value, but you have some degree of uncertainty in its value, a plus or minus T percent. Well, let me illustrate how it works with the diagram shown. The the first band is colored red. I go to my table and I notice red represents 2. So I'm going, going to go 10 times 2. The second band is colored green. I go to my table. Green represents 5. So I'm going to go 10 times 2 plus 5. Together, that's 25. The third band, the multiplier band, is colored brown. I go to my table and I look in the multiplier column and that means times 10 to the first. So I'm going to take 10 times 2 plus 5, 25, and multiply it by 10 to the first or simply by 10. That gives me 250 ohms. One color band left. It's the tolerance band. I call it the uncertainty band. It's brown, and it's a little bit more complicated than the other colors, but brown tolerance bands mean plus or minus 1%. In other words, the, this resistor has a resistance of 250 ohms, but I'm a little bit uncertain. It's plus or minus 2.5 ohms. In other words, it ranges from 247.5 ohms to 252.5 ohms. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of these in the description section of this video. The top two, the Minds on Physics and the Concept Builders, are great interactive questioning modules that help you brush up on some of the concepts. The third, the calculator pad, will help you do your calculations. It will give you a problem, an answer, and an audio guided solution. And the last is, an inner, is a written tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.